You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. So we're um, going to be joined on the telephone. Firstly, thank you very much to both of you for joining us. I was hoping you could just introduce yourself to our listeners and um, give us an introduction on what you're going to cover today. Hello, Daniel. It's Sarah Winningham here. I'm a consumer champion and uh, one of the ex-dragons. Now I'm an ex-dragon. Oh, from Dragon's Den. And hi, Daniel. Uh, my name's Sam. I work for a company called clearscore.com. Uh, we were the first company to offer your credit score and report for free. I'm also a huge fan of Sarah, as I should, I should add. You can't say that. I can't, <laughs> look, I'm blushing, but it's on the radio, so you can't see it. <laughs> so um, I understand that you're um, going to talk to us about how 18-year-olds, um, as soon as they turn 18, are um, planning to sort of take out loans and, and get into debt, which uh, seems quite, quite frightening, quite young, really, to be doing that. Well, we did a we did a national survey of fifteen to seventeen year olds to find out uh, about their relationship with credit, and we found that seventy percent of them are going to take out a credit product in the first year when they turn eighteen. Uh, so whether that's a credit card or a loan, uh, they're going to be spending money, and that's okay, right? They want to have a holiday, or they might want to buy their first car, um, the things they might need. The the difficult thing, and the thing that concerns us at ClearScore is the fact that by the time they turn 18, a third of them have no plan about how they're going to pay back the money. And a third of them have actually got themselves into financial difficulties. And if you miss repayments on credit cards and loans, that can have an impact further down the line when you're applying for your first mortgage or you need a loan for something. Lenders will look at you slightly differently if you've missed payments. So the message that we at ClearScore are trying to urge is that credit is fine. It's part of the way of life. But make sure you know how you're going to pay it back or you can get yourself in trouble. Yeah, because I was going to say, you can very easily become um, tied down. I know that, you know, some people say taking out some debts, you know, gives you, um, you know, a, a better credit score. But uh, I think you've got to be very careful, otherwise you can uh, very easily end up in real difficulty, especially at a young age. Yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a bit of a myth that taking a credit card would be bad for your credit score. In actual fact, it's the opposite. If you take out a credit card and you spend a reasonable, reasonable amount every month and you pay it back on time, that looks fantastic for your credit score. Lenders will look at you and say, this is a person I can trust. And further down the line, they're going to be able to give you a loan or a mortgage with great repayment terms. Um, the challenge is that when people get into agreements on credit cards or loans, they don't really understand what, what it involves. Uh, we found that, you know, awareness of what a credit score is very low, just 13% of young adults knowing what it is. Uh, APR is a term which nobody really understands. Only 8% of this young adult group know what that is. And so we, we feel that there's an education job to be done, particularly amongst parents. They should be sitting down with the young adults and having a chat about what this all means and making sure their kids don't get into unnecessary trouble. So not rushing to do it. Well, I think uh, I think every 18-year-old uh, wants to enjoy life. Of course they do. You know, turning 18 is a fantastic moment. And if you have your eye on, I don't know, a new Xbox or you want to buy your first car, then credit can help. You've just got to make sure you know how you're going to pay it back and you're not going to get yourself in too much financial difficulty. I think one of the things that um, really can, I found quite alarming, actually, about the Career School survey was that a third um, of of teenagers or post-18 uh, people that were interviewed between 18 and 24 actually admitted that they got themselves into financial difficulty because they didn't understand what uh, the terms were of the loan or the, the credit card or what have you. And I've spent a lot of time in schools in the UK speaking to young kids, really young kids, teenagers, people who are just about um, to leave school. And this is one, of, some, some people have even turned around to me and said, we didn't know we had to pay it back. So we're talking about a, a, you know, a level of financial understanding that actually could be really serious if this access to credit, can, if, 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 they, if they're offered so many, so much access to credit, and they take it out without knowing what it is that they're doing. Yeah, I was going to say that's quite, quite frightening because, I mean, 
I don't know whether I'm unusual, but when I was 18, that was the last thing I was thinking about taking out um, debt. And the thought of taking out debt would have frightened me because of that tie down. You know, I don't like that that tie down. I mean, even with a, a phone, I suppose pay as you go because the thought of having to find that money each month to pay off a, a phone bill would quite um, worry me and find me tied down. So to hear that some youngsters didn't even know they'd have to pay it back, um, um, does that worry you or, or surprise you? I, I just, I, I mean, I think it's quite alarming. I really do, because it's not so much, that it's not even the fact that they're taking it out. It's the fact that they don't know. And it, there's that, that, you know, we're not equipping our kids to leave home or leave school at 16 or 18 and go out into the big wide world if they don't understand things like if you borrow money, you've got to pay it back. You know, we're not, do, we're doing them a huge disservice. It's our job as parents and also uh, as part of the education system, to be able to give those tools to to these kids to be able to understand what it is that they're doing. And I would say, you know, if you're a parent listening to this, because there are the people that we surveyed, two thirds of them said they've never discussed finance at home. So you're absolutely not alone. And the feedback that I've had time and time again from parents is, but I don't understand it. I can't explain to my kids because I don't get it. But there are so many tools that are available. And in fact, um, to back up this survey, Clear Schools put an amazing checklist um, and information on their website. If you go onto their, the uh, Clear School website and click on Learn, there is loads of information there about how to talk about this with your teenagers. Uh, the main things that you need to be talking about. I mean, you'll never, if you don't do it, you'll never forgive yourself if your kids are one of those one in three that actually are getting themselves into real financial difficulty within a year of turning 18. So it sounds like it's not so much the problem of perhaps taking out a loan, it's more about the education and understanding it and being aware of what you're doing before you um, do take out a loan. Yeah, I mean, look, credit is a is an important part of our life, and it's very unlikely that somebody will get to the end of their hopefully long life without taking on some form of credit. But it's and there are times when there's a real emergency and you need it. You know, it's not just for the joys in life. It's actually sometimes you really need it. The washing machine broke when you didn't expect it to, or whatever, and you need to borrow some money to be able to get to work because your car's broken down, whatever that may be. But it's about understanding how you're going to pay it back and what that really means. I think one of the big uh, culprits, actually, when people turn 18, is a store card, for example. So all of a sudden, you can get £500 worth of credit on a, on a school card, a store a school card, a store card. And even then, you know, if you were faced with the... If somebody said to you, right, you can buy those pair of shoes for £50, but actually... Um, if you buy it on your store card and then don't pay it back at the end of the month and you leave it on there for a couple of years, that could end up costing you £120 or £150. And the question is, is honestly, would you buy it at that moment if you knew that that's how long it was A, going to take you to pay back and B, how much it was going to cost you? And that's the type of education that I'm talking about is making sure that our eyes are wide open when we're doing it because we want to have a bit of fun, like the holiday or like to buy new clothes or whatever. When it's an emergency, it's different. But when, when you're doing it, because, and there may be other alternatives like saving, and it's absolutely fine, exactly as Sam said, of course you can borrow money, just make sure you can pay it back. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, emergencies and uh, getting things you um, want are two, two different things. And often the things you want, you know, it isn't going to take that too long to save up for them and you probably didn't need them straight away, especially like a pair of trainers. Yeah, exactly. And it, so it all depends on what you're, you're buying it for. Now, the question is, what we're saying is, you know, credit does become actually available to 18-year-olds at a scary rate. You know, it's, it, it's very easy to take on credit when you're 18. And exactly as Sam said, if you then don't know how you're going to pay back and you start missing payments, that's really going to have quite significant effects on you further down the line. If you do, for example, want to buy a house or, or what have you, just missing one payment can have a negative effect. So, you know, please don't take out credit unless you need it and unless you know how you're going to pay it back. 
Yeah, I was going to say, because um, often I suppose you've got to make sure that it's in your interest and not just in the company who's um, lending it to you, because obviously, you know, they've got a, a vested interest because they're going to make um, interest out of that loan, so they're going to want to loan it to you, even if really it's for something that you could probably save up for. Yes, except, of course, I mean, what really smart people do is they buy stuff on a credit card, get loads of points and rewards, and then pay it back at the end of that month. So, actually, the credit card company um, doesn't, you know, doesn't make any, they don't, they never end up getting any interest from you because, actually, what you do is you pay it back every single month. And they're the really savvy credit card users, the ones that have a really good credit rating, the ones that don't use all of the amount that's available to them but just use it every month, a small percentage of the amount that's available, and they pay it off every month as well as a natural direct debit. But that can be very hard to cash flow manage. It can be very difficult to remember. You look at your bank account, you think, oh, I've got 600 quid in my bank account. Um, But you forget you've actually spent £800 this month on your credit card. So it can be difficult to do. You have to be pretty disciplined to do that. So it's just, again, about making sure that you're on top of it. But I would say if anybody, if any teenagers or parents of teenagers or even younger children are listening and thinking, oh, I have not had this conversation at home yet, then just have a look at the, there's loads of information out there. You can Google it and also have a look at the information on the Clear School website because it really is um, a a really nice, simple guide to, to to having that conversation at home. Thank you very much for joining us. It really is appreciated. Super. Very welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us.